It marks the 11th anniversary of the Marikana massacre. 34 protesting mine workers were killed at the infamous Marikana Kopi near Rustenburg in the northwest province. And among the first responders at the scene was humanitarian aid group Gift of the Givers. Its founder, Dr. M.T. Suleiman, joins us now for more just to remember this day back 11 years ago. Dr. M.T. Suleiman, thank you for your time and a very warm good morning to you. Uh, surely this day brings back memories. One of the first responders was your organization, Gift of the Givers. What do you remember particularly about this day in Marikana? Good morning, Tabelo. It wasn't exactly on that day that we responded. We were following the crisis for those, those days leading up to the, to the shooting. And in that period of time, you know, before the shooting happened, we were getting lots of calls from members within the trade union, from lo local miners themselves, and families living in the area to say, look, the strike is uh, protracted. We're not getting any support. We're hungry. We've got no supplies. We're getting no wages. We don't know what to do. Can you help? Can you assist? And when those appeals continually came in, I mean, of course, then the, the disaster happened and they got shot. And immediately after that, we went in and we said, you know, we can't leave them alone in this situation. We made arrangements with them. We said, look, we know people are angry. They're hungry. We know we're going to come in, you know, and we're going to come in without any security. And they said, look, we respect what you guys do. We'll make sure everything is fine and we will receive you. But please, it was a begging, it was a pleading that we are really hungry and we can't feed our families. So we made arrangements. We made contact with all the right people, with the unions and the ordinary people. And we went to the area to, 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 to drop off the food and, and deliver it to them. At one point, the last checkpoint was the SAPS Casper. And the police asked, like, where are you guys going? <clears throat> so we said, you know, to the miners. And they said, are you guys crazy? You know what? We can't come beyond this point. Mm. So we said, we have to go. And as we went there, they received us with such oh, joy. It was incredible. You know, with such respect. And they were all, had the, all the weapons in their hand, you know, knopkiris and traditional weapons and, you know, dancing around. But the moment we came in, they were so disciplined, you know, mm. and they were so grateful that somebody brought food, not only for them, but for their families. Yeah. And they said, look, we're very hungry. And of course, we started giving out the food. At some point, there was some pushing, nothing dangerous, nothing serious. It's just that they were afraid they were going to get left out whilst we were able to feed so many people. Mm. Whilst we were doing that, we said, look, the white minor families are not here. And they said, look, they said, they think they're scared to come. So we found them and we told them, let's go there, you know, because we don't fit separately. There's no segregation here. We do everything together. So reluctantly, they agreed. They got into the bus and they came to the area where we were feeding. And to the su surprise of anyone, the black miners, the white miners, you guys come in, you guys go, go first in the queue. Eat first. Absolute respect. No problem between the different groups, you know, peace and harmony. All they needed was food. They were hungry. Mm. Mr. Suleiman, if I could just come in there and ask you to take me back to a particular call that you received to stop feeding the miners. Take me through that call. Where did that call come from? And why was the request for you and Gift of the Givers to stop feeding the hungry miners? There were two calls. I'm not sure if it was the same day. I can't remember. It's a long time ago now. But there were two calls. The first call, the first call came from a person saying they're from Lutuli House. And he said, the old man has said that you, you should stop feeding the miners. So I said, who's the old man? They said, the president. And I said, why would you say that? He said, no, they, he said, stop feeding the, the, the miners, and then they will come to the table and the protest action will stop. So I said, that doesn't sound like the president talking. That sounds like somebody else saying it's the president talking, putting words into his mouth. So I said, the president has my number. Tell him to call me directly. I want to hear it from his mouth that what you're saying is exactly what you requested. But in the meantime, you can tell all your friends and the president that I'm not going to stop this. I'm going to double the number of food parcels that I'm going to take to the people of Manikana, and nobody's going to stop me. Mm. It, it, I'm not sure if it was the same day or a little later or another day. I was in the I know I was in the car on my way to Manikana. And I got a call from somebody who said there's a businessman, they're from Rustenburg, and you know, the investors and it, you know, and the, the, this, this mining strike has to stop. It's affecting profits. So he said, same thing, uh, stop feeding the mine workers, they'll starve, the families will starve, and they'll come to the table and the strike will end. By you feeding them, you are protecting the strike. And I remember telling him that this is not a civilized way to behave. I'm not sure of the exact words right now, but I remember telling him that if your wife and your children were hungry, what would you do? 
is, is would you behave in the same manner? And I said, another thing you need to, to understand is that a hungry person is a very angry person. I'm actually doing you guys a favor by by feeding the miners so they calm down and maybe there'll be more there'll be an opportunity to discuss and to talk. But it is strange that both sides wanted to starve the miners out of the strike and bring them to the knees from hunger. Mm. Totally callous, I don't know, and irresponsible and profits before people. That was the most horrendous experience of human you know, behavior. Yeah. We know that many years later, Dr. You know, Suleiman, there's still uh, the families that are lamenting, the loved ones that were killed in that tragedy, uh, but also receiving no relief whatsoever. Um, I know that uh, the wives and loved ones of those who perished on the day are still expecting uh, the president to come and address them, President Cyril Ramaphosa, uh, to come to Marikana, always pleading for him to come and address them, uh, seeking answers, but also some sort of relief because they've lost most of them, their caregivers and their providers. Have you been in touch with any of those family members? Have you reached out uh, to hear how they're fearing and what the experiences uh, since that tragedy have been like? We haven't spoken to the families after that. You know, after that day happened, we met the miners, we did what we have to do. At some later stage, we came in, we brought in medical teams, they wanted medical support, we did that. And then, of course, the story died down. But in the last few months, we've been called by Sibanya, you know, the, the mine that took over from Lonman. And they, you know, they're interested and they, they have already been doing it. They've said they've been busy with the healing process, for providing houses, providing medical care, providing studies for, for the children of the affected families, and they're trying to do more. And they've been in negotiations with us for the last few months to see how to intervene and, and expand that intervention, not necessarily only for those affected by the problems of 2011, but for the current people also. Where they talk about healing, you know, uh, renewal, community development, support, education, health, housing, all those kind of things. So we'll see what happens. They will mm. be in contact with them for, for quite a few weeks. In fact, they invited me to do the Marikana lecture, you know, for, for Monday. And that's how this topic has come about. And it seems they're very keen and serious about what they're saying. And if that's the case, you know, that's the, all a tribute goes to them and to mining companies who can behave in this way, in a positive way. To remember that your mind workers are, are humans they're not yeah. machines you know yeah. they're not prophets they're not numbers they are people that have souls that have anxiety they have feelings they have hunger and they have emotions and we need to learn from the lesson of the past you know it's a very important lesson to learn in human behavior and, and the most important lesson is you know is, is do, uh, do we put prophets before people we all say the police shot but somebody gave them an instruction to shot who, who was who was behind all that you know that needs to be brought to the fore at some point Hmm. Just ahead of that lecture, before I let you go as well, Dr. Suleiman, how do we heal as a country, given that there's still many other issues uh, that pertain to mining in this country, to mineral resources in this country? Yes, we are commemorating uh, the Marigana tragedy today. It happened 11 years ago, but there's still other issues mushrooming. We've, we've seen the Zamazamas. Um, the problem still much a big one in the Gauteng province and other provinces, such as the Free State province. Uh, we're seeing, of course, the police still battling to deal with that and get that under control. We seeing mining companies still battle to, to close up some of these uh, mining companies. It seems the issues around mine workers and mining as an industry uh, continue to exacerbate in the country. In your view, how do you think we move forward and resolve some of these issues? Well, we need a, a, a large, you know, a big intervention in terms of communication and in human behavior. It's time people understand that, you know, we have to treat people as humans, no matter what. We need the rule of law. People can't just go into mines and start taking stuff with what they own, do things in their own way. That can't work. We need strict enforcement of law. That's a given to make any country stable. The laws have to be humane. They have to be, I mean, they are legal. They have to be implemented in the correct way with, with compassion. Even if it's a harsh law, it has to be done with compassion. But we need to sit together, the workers, bosses, corporates, government, and say what's in the best interest of the country, but above that, without affecting the lives of people how do we progress without dehumanizing people without taking dignity away without putting pro and exorbitant profits you know in the advance of people what communication peaceful and with the intention to find a solution not to aggravate the problem a lot of times we go to this the discussions take place but our people are coming with one stance there's going to mm. be no compromise we're going to have our way the guys going to have their way and I remember Mandela saying that if you're coming with that kind of attitude, there's pointers even going in to have a discussion like that. Hmm. He always spoke about 
be willing to make a compromise. Let's put it another way, for the country. If all of us take off our labels, our branding, our, 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 our titles, and look at each other and say, look, if we stand together in the same field, what are we? We are South Africans. We are human. Right. What, the, what combines us? We have the same feelings, the same wants, the same needs. We want to love in love, in compassion, in kindness. We want to go to school. We want to eat. We want to earn. We have opportunities. And if all of us have the same kind of mentality and there's a willingness to fix things together in the interest of people in the country, these problems can be solved. It's not impossible to solve these problems as long as we put humanity before profits. And, it, and to be honest, since the time of COVID, I've been seeing a major mind uh, set change in people's behavior in terms of incorporating and taking care of people in a more positive manner. And that's coming in a very positive light. Well, thank you so much for speaking to me. Gift of the Givers Foundation, Dr. Imtia Suleiman, thank you so much for your time as we continue to commemorate and reflect back 11 years ago when that uh, tragedy occurred in Maragana. 34 mine workers uh, were, of course, uh, killed at the time. The big question is, will the families receive justice and will this country heal? We need to get to the bottom of what happened and not just continue to commemorate and talk about it only, but get to justice as well as healing, as Dr. Imtia Suleiman has just alluded.